Good morning, guys. So, I want to share from the book of Nehemiah this time. I'm going to read from, uh, chapter 2, verse 2, through verse 5. So, here we go. Sorry, the, wind's got, the fans got my page all messed up. Okay, here we go. Nehemiah 2, starting with verse 2. So the king said to me, Why is your face sad, though you are not sick? This is nothing but sadness of heart. Then I was very much afraid. I said to the king, Let the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad? When the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies desolate, and its gates have been consumed by fire. Then the king said to me, What would you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. I said to the king, If it please the king, and if your servant has found favor before you, send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tomb, and that I may rebuild it. So, but uh, I get inspired from reading this section of scripture is because Nehemiah shows us that we can be actively doing something or in this case even if we're actively having a conversation with somebody else we can still talk to God at the same time. We can still pray to God. You know, we don't have to focalize our prayer. We can do it mentally. You know, we can, we can pray with our mind and with our heart. Not, we don't necessarily have to pray with our voice. Because like that, he, he prayed to the Lord... Um, while he's having a conversation with King Artaxerxes. And, sorry, I just woke up. Sorry, I just woke up. And so, and, and that's the beautiful thing about it. And it reminds me that God is available to us 24-7. 365 you know and God does answer the prayers you know um, I had covered an, another devotional that I did a while back about you know my was Prayer of confession on his country's behalf for sitting against God. And, and asking for forgiveness and and all that stuff because of what had happened to Jerusalem. So, this conversation takes place because he's so heavy in heart that it is visibly, visibly seen on his face to the point to where the king sees it and knows that something's wrong with Nehemiah, hence the conversation. And so, when the king asked them, asked him, why is that? Well, the MI naturally tells him why. And then, of course, you know, then the king said, "So, what? What do you request? You know, what would you request? You know, what? What do you want me to do about it?" 
I guess is another way of of saying what the king asked. So at that very moment, Nehemiah prayed to God either for strength, strength, courage, hope, guidance, could be all the above. But it was had been very quick, you know. This this isn't as something where you would delay five minutes and pray five minutes and then and then answer the question. It was like question given, question answered. And in that short, short, short time, Nehemiah prayed to God. And so prayer is about Talk to the Lord with your mind, with your heart, with your soul. Not so much with your voice. You don't have to vocalize your prayers with your voice. Because God knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in your mind, what's in your thoughts. It's just when you pray, make sure that you are focused on God at that moment and he'll answer your and he'll answer your prayers. And so the guidance or the strength of the courage because he said he was afraid. So I'm guessing Nehemiah had had prayed for courage to speak his mind about what he would like to do. And hence, his response to the king about sending him to Judah so he can rebuild the walls and the gates of Jerusalem. Uh, and the, end, the ending of the outcome of the conversation, king grants his request. And that's and that starts getting covered um, shortly after a couple of phrases, couple of verses after that. It it pretty much boom. He gets a permission, and not only does he get permission, but he is guaranteed any and all resources that he's going to need to finish his task. So. Prayers answered, even though it was a very short prayer, had to have been a very short prayer. And, and like I said, it just it just inspires me because it, it reminds me that you know, at a moment, I'm a God is available to me anytime. So at a moment, even if I'm actively doing something, if I'm focused on God, on Jesus, I can pray. Right then and there, for you know, hope, guidance, strength, calmness, you know, whatever. We have that ability. So, um, just uh, just remember that, you know, you don't have to have your head bowed and eyes closed to pray. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't have to. It's where your heart has to be and your mind has to be that's important when you pray. So, anyways, love you guys. Have a blessed day, and we will see you tomorrow.